So you booked your first portrait photo shoot and now you're overthinking it. Am I gonna do well? Do I even know what I'm doing? Should I cancel? Don't worry because I'm gonna go over 15 tips that will help you nail your first photo shoot. Hey everyone, it's Stefano here. I'm a portrait photographer in Toronto, Canada, and I'm gonna go over 15 tips and things I do before, during, and after every photo shoot to ensure every shoot is successful. I'm gonna assume you already have a model or a client and a general idea of what the shoot is about. If you do wanna see a video about how to get models, let me know down in the comments, but after you have your model, let's get into some of the things that will help you have a successful first photo shoot. Before the shoot, scout a location. This is something I do all the time and something you should be doing too. If I'm getting groceries, riding my motorcycle or hanging out with friends, I am always trying to spot good photo locations. This is something I do on social media as well. Usually when I see a cool location, I save the video or photo for later. And to keep track of all these locations, I usually add them to a note on my phone with the address and a photo of what the location looks like. This way, if I'm booking a session, I can scroll through all my locations and find the best one that suits the shoot. What should your model wear? Outfits can make or break a photo shoot. The right outfit should match the location you choose and the vibe you're going for. If you're shooting in a vintage 80s studio and your model is wearing clothing that doesn't match the vintage mood, the photos aren't gonna look good. A perfect example of this is a shoot I did with my friend Sarah. I wanted to do a shoot on the subway here in Toronto and because of the red seats and the cream colored subway walls We went for a vintage retro style outfit Something I like to do is search Pinterest for a similar shoot If I know I'm gonna do a shoot at a parking garage Then I'll search parking garage photo shoot because all parking garages are basically the same This will give you an idea of what outfit matches the location by simply scrolling through Pinterest You might find that the best parking garage shoots all the models were wearing jeans and they looked great then you might want to suggest your client wear jeans. Look for poses. I can't stress this enough. Being prepared with poses is important because it not only shows the client that you're prepared and know what you're doing, but it also sets the tone for the shoot. If you're not prepared and on your A game, the client won't be either. I'll even browse for poses while I'm on my way to the shoot. And make sure you save these poses to your phone. That way, if you don't have data or Wi-Fi, you can still access them if you need. If you and the model are running out of poses, there's nothing wrong with pulling out your phone mid-shoot and looking over poses that you want to try. Check your gear. The night before your shoot, you want to make sure you have all your gear ready and everything will function properly. The best way to do this is to make a checklist, and this is what should be on it. Make sure to put all your batteries on charge, even if the shoot is only one hour, and I know I don't need more than one battery, I'll still charge all five of my batteries and bring them in case something goes wrong. Make sure you format your SD card or all your SD cards so you're not running out of space because you forgot to remove all your travel photos off the card. Bring multiple SD cards because SD cards fail, go corrupt, and break. There's many things that can happen to a card so make sure you bring multiple cards as a backup in case something happens to your main. Switch on your camera and make sure all your settings are at a neutral starting point. Obviously settings will change based on a number of factors, but it doesn't hurt to have these settings at a neutral starting point so you don't have to make major adjustments during the shoot. And lastly, make sure you clean all your lenses. Have them clean, dust free and ready to go. So you did all that and today is a big day, it's shoot day. The first tip I have is if you're shooting during the day in harsh light, something I do all the time is have my model do a 360 to see where the shadows cast. Obviously you want to avoid really harsh shadows on your model's face unless that's the look you're going for. Harsh light is usually unflattering and it really brings out the imperfections in someone's skin. So one way you can avoid harsh light is by finding an area with shade or using a 5-in-1 reflector. I'll put some photos up on the screen from a shoot I did last week. It was during the day with harsh light and we still made it work. For this photo, we went one level down in the parking garage so we can get in the shade. There's no harsh shadows on her face and it's evenly lit. Now for the biggest tip that will save you hours of time when editing is to physically remove things from your shot instead of saving it for post. I used to do this a lot. I would review the photos at the shoot and notice something wrong, but instead of changing it then, I would just say it's okay, I'll remove it in post. The problem with this is when you have over 100 photos to edit and you have to remove a bracelet or a clothing tag from every single photo, it's time consuming and something that could have easily been avoided. Some of the most common things that we forget to remove are bracelets, hair elastics on your model's wrist, clothing tags, dress tags, or even a hair on her face. This kind of leads me into my next tip, which is to let the model see the photos in real time. This tip is really important and I'll tell you why. The last thing you wanna do is complete the photo shoot, edit the photos, send the photos to your client, and they don't like them. 
Letting them look at the photos during the shoot will not only let them see how they look, but it also opens up suggestions for other things. I usually ask them to look over the photos and if there's a pose they want to try or if they want to redo a pose, then they can. Again, making your clients happy at the end of the day will ensure they continue booking you, recommend you to their friends, and overall help you grow a more successful business. Don't be afraid of letting them scroll through all the photos because it's better for them to point out something during the shoot than to be disappointed with the results after. While they're looking at all the photos, this is actually a perfect time to pull out your phone and look over all those poses you saved, but also look at your surroundings to see if there's another location to take photos at. Who knows, you may find a better spot just around the corner. The next tip is to let your model have fun and to stop controlling everything with the shoot. Once you get all your photos that you wanted, let the model do the poses they wanna do. If they wanna dance around, try different things, let them do that because at the end of the day, it's going to lead to a happy client and more photos for you and them. I'm constantly asking my clients if there's anything else they wanna do and usually there always is. I'm gonna throw up a photo on the screen from a shoot I did last week. The photo was completely unplanned and has easily become one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. The location, the outfit, the pose, the edit, everything about this photo is perfect. That same photo shoot, our only location we had planned was the parking garage, but we decided to go somewhere else after we finished all our shots there. I'll throw some photos up on the screen from that same shoot at a different location. Again, these were completely unplanned and found this location when walking around aimlessly. Remember, the best photos are the ones that were never planned. If you're not the most social person and you can't keep a conversation with your client while doing the shoot, one thing you can do is play music. Playing music will get rid of that awkward silence, allow the model to feel more loose instead of tense, and allow for natural and fluid motions when posing. Which leads me to my next point, and that's to be happy and in a good mood. It doesn't matter what profession you're in, nobody likes to work with people who are upset, not happy, and complain all the time. So if you want the best results, you need to be in a happy or good mood so your clients are also feeling the same way, and overall, you have a great photo shoot. Be that hype person for your model, continue to tell them that they're doing great and that the photos are coming out great. The client will become more comfortable and that's what you want. That's how you're gonna get the most natural looking photos. And just like that, you finish the most stressful part of the photo shoot. It's not done yet though. I have a few more tips that are super important when you finish your session. The one thing you have to remember to do right away after you get home from your photo shoot is to back up all your photos. This should be a given, but because it's your first photo shoot, maybe you didn't think about it. Make sure you back up your SD card to multiple drives so you have at least two backups. Don't start editing, don't even look at the photos until you back everything up. I usually back my photos up to my Samsung T5 SSD as well as my eight terabyte hard drive. I also leave the photos on my SD card until I've edited everything and the client receive their photos. And one tip that should be common sense but a lot of people don't do is that you shouldn't edit your photos from your SD card. You wanna import all your photos from a drive. The drive should be one that is connected to your computer or you can connect to your computer. Some photographers don't like to do this but I like to keep in contact with my client. If I'm editing their photos but I'm not done editing all of them, I like to send them a quick photo of an edit through iMessage or Instagram just to give them a sneak peek. Clients love it when I do this and they always get super excited to see the rest of the photos. There's two reasons why I do this. One being that it shows a client that you are working on their photos. Let's say your turnaround time is two weeks. For us, we need that time to edit those photos but for them, two weeks is a long time. So if you can make it seem shorter by sending them a sneak peek, they'll be very happy for that. The second thing that this does is it gets the client hyped up or excited for the day they do receive the rest of the photos. The next tip is an important one. If you spend every day after the shoot editing those photos, you're done with all of them and you finally think it's that time you send them to your client. Sleep on it for just another day so you can look back at all the photos with fresh eyes. Usually when you spend eight hours editing photos, your eyes start to get used to the edit and you can't really tell if it looks good or not. You can actually test this out yourself. Pull up a photo in Lightroom, adjust your white balance to make the photo warmer than it should be. Continue editing the photo, you know, making slight adjustments, removing things in Photoshop. Spend a while editing the photo and you'll notice that the warmer look doesn't look too bad. Go to sleep and the next morning, open up that photo and you'll notice that the photo is way too warm and you need to tone it down. 
This is because your eyes got used to that edit you did yesterday. The way you saw it in the morning is how your client will see it. So what I'm trying to get at is even though you're finished all the photos and you're ready to send them to your client, make sure you get some rest and look over the photos in the morning because I guarantee you there will be a change you want to make. Which leads me to my last tip and that is to deliver within a reasonable time frame. Remember that the photo shoot isn't complete until all the photos have been edited and sent to the client. Timeframes can change based on how long your session was, but make sure you keep it reasonable. The client should already know when they can expect the edited photos because you should have told them when you're planning the shoot as well as after the shoot ended. I'll tell you this right now, a client is not going to wait a month to receive their photos from a one hour portrait session. So make sure you get those photos delivered within a reasonable time frame. If you follow these 15 tips, I guarantee you will succeed and have an amazing first photo shoot. Let me know down in the comments how your first photo shoot went because I would love to hear about it. If you are a photographer and you can remember how your first photo shoot went, drop it in the comments because I would also love to hear about that. If you found this video useful, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell to be notified when I post a new video. Yes, a like does help me with the algorithm and pushes this video out to help more people like you. Peace.